I met Gannon because um, Drew Hester, they were roommates. And I've known Drew since I was like five or something like that. I mean, we grew up in Laguna Beach together. So I knew, I knew, uh, I knew Drew and I'd go over to Drew's house and do demos. That's how I did the first Coattail Riders record. And he had like a you know, little makeshift studio. And I mean, really nothing like $5,000 worth of gear. And that's how we made the first record. But I would go over there and do demos, what I thought were demos, and Gannon was always there. And I'm like, hey, will you play guitar on this? Because I'm not very good at the guitar. And he was just, yeah, obviously, he's an amazing guitar player. And that's kind of how we developed our sort of friendship and musical friendship, you know, was just over there doing music. And it was just me and Gannon and Hester for, for the longest time, just making, you know, recording songs and going to have lunch and... You know, he just became one of my good buddies, best friends. Billy and Taylor had never played together before. So that's a unique combination. They have never worked together. So that day is pretty cool. You got Taylor Hawkins and Billy Moeller who just met, and we all played together that day. No rehearsal. That was it. So what you see is what you get. Playing with a guy like Taylor Hawkins, he's really tight. Everything he's doing is just, he's a, he's a machine, and it feels great and it's powerful. The way that Taylor plays, it's more about the, uh, the, the feeling he's giving off. The notes are economized, so you're not getting a lot of like double strokes, you're getting more single strokes, it's bigger, it's, it's just uh, it's like exclamation marks everywhere. Being the fearless as a live drummer, is, for me in a rock setting especially, is, you know, you t that's taking a chance. 
because rock and roll tends to be sort of, you know, this is the fill that you need to play to get from A to B, you know? And I stick to those for the most part of the Foo Fighters. It's, it's you know, it's not, it's not rocket science to go, <laughs> you know? So there's a lot of that. But then, you know, you ha I think it's good for drummers to, you gotta have those spaces to go for it every night, you know? You have to, and that's kind of how you, it's like conquering your fears. Yeah, Dropout, I think, if I'm correct, that one started out actually as a leftover drum track from Coattail Rider's first record. How this whole thing came about, actually, is Taylor had some demo drums that he didn't use for a track, right? So I ended up taking his drums and, play, and making a new song out of it. And so that was kind of the, the center of the record. Gannon did that without me knowing, that bastard. And, um, and he just kind of handed it to me, which has a very Stuart Copeland sort of feel on the record, and which, you know, is, I'm famous for ripping him off. But I, that one's a little bit more comparable to my day job, which is the Foo Fighters. That one's got more of that kind of feel to it. You know, it's pretty straight ahead rock for, uh, for this record, you know. Something like Not From Here, that's very indicative of Jimmy Chamberlain, you know, you know that. But the, you know, Dropout has definitely got my kind of, I guess, what I do on it a little bit more.
Yeah, El Nino is like definitely his Jeff Beck sort of ode. I had the whole f***ing record of his cannon. <laughs> That's all anybody, all any guitar, any good guitar player, all they really want to be is Jeff Beck. From Brian May and up, you know. Yeah, that one's the kind of the real proggy one, sort of, or the sort of jazz fusion-y one for me. Um, that one's good, and the ending is one of those things where I think I told Gannon to write a different ending. I think that we had done the whole, we, he had sent me the whole track. Like, he sent me a track before we recorded it for the record. And I, I had the whole song, but it didn't have the ending. Okay. And I was like, write a fucking cool ending, you know? That's something in seven, you know, or something, something interesting that I can kind of go off over. And yeah, that was one that, that you either get good at the end or you don't, you know? And then like you kind of every time is a fucking crapshoot. For me, soloing over seven is not something I normally fucking do, you know? So, excuse my French, kids. But it's it's um, but that's a fun one to play.